We all have the right to feel safe. Everyone, from the big to the little, has the right to say no to the things that make them feel sad or scared. The problem is, when you're little, it's not that easy to say no, especially when the thing making you feel unsafe is a lot bigger than you, or even worse, is meant to be looking after you. It would be nice to think this didn't happen, but it does every day. In fact, in Australia, a case of child abuse is reported every three minutes across all of society, all age groups, and in all sorts of different ways. Child abuse can be physical when a child is harmed through aggressive physical behaviour. It can be sexual when someone tricks or forces them to take part in a sexual activity. It can be emotional when they receive ongoing negative messages about themselves. Or it can be neglect when they aren't provided with life's basic necessities. Every kind of abuse can cause long-term damage to a child's well-being. And over 90% of the time, the abuse is committed by a relative or family friend and in their own home. So how do we protect the little and vulnerable from such a big problem? We can't be with them every minute of the day. Luckily, there are ways to help, even when we're not around. They're called protective behaviours. They're skills a child can use to recognise and deal with situations which make them feel unsafe. Teaching protective behaviours gives kids the power to say no to the sad and the scary. The first protective behaviour is knowing what safety is. Safety is something we don't think about until it goes away. Kids need to know what it feels like, so talk to them about times when they feel safe and times they don't. Let them use their own words and ways to describe how safety feels, inside and out. Once they understand safety, it's time to talk about feeling scared. It's okay to feel scared. It can even be fun, like when we're on a roller coaster. But when the fun stops, that's when we need to be aware. Help your child recognise the early warning signs of feeling scared, like a pounding heart or shaky legs. Talk about when they feel these signs and ways they can say no to scariness when they've had enough. The next protective behaviour is building a network. That's a group of trustworthy people your child can ask for help when they feel scared or unsafe. Practice ways your child can ask for help. Let them know it's fine to persist and continue asking until they feel safe. Encourage them to make calls, share news and keep in touch with their network. Speaking of keeping in touch, another protective behaviour is knowing the difference between a good and bad touch. Touching can be confusing for kids because sometimes it can feel both good and bad. An easy way to explain the difference is that a good touch will make you feel safe and happy, while a bad touch hurts, makes you feel unsafe or is on the private parts of your body, which include your mouth as well as the bits covered by bathers. Bad touches are not okay, and when they happen, you should always tell someone, no matter what. Make sure your child knows the correct names for all body parts. That includes the penis and vagina. Remind your child that all their body parts, private or not, belong to them. Just like touches, there are good and bad secrets. It's important for kids to know which is which. A good or safe secret is one that only has to be kept for a short time and usually has a happy ending, like a surprise party. A bad secret lasts a long time and makes you feel sad or unsafe. Or it's when someone says you're not allowed to tell anyone and something bad will happen if you do. Let your child know that there is no secret they can't tell you or their network, no matter what it is or who told them. The last protective behaviour is knowing when to say no. There are different kinds of no for different situations. There's the quiet, no thank you, for when we're feeling safe and using our manners. And then there's a loud, screaming no we use in a personal emergency. That's when we're scared and our early warning signs are very strong. Tell your child that in an emergency, rules don't apply. You can scream, dob, interrupt, 
use the phone or even talk to a stranger. The most important thing is to keep safe, and that goes for grown-ups too. If you see, think or hear that a child could be at risk of harm, it's important to respond in a safe, calm and reasonable manner. Believe and support the child, but don't promise to keep it a secret. Use your network and the correct service procedures to take action. When we use protective behaviours, it makes it a lot easier for everyone to feel safe, just like we have the right to.